Hillbilly DVD reviews happen to be coming to you in the horror-tastic month of October. 21 more days till Halloween. Fucking silver shamrock. Today we got something special coming for you. We got something that's rare, something that's hot, something that's controversial, something that's fucking blue. Today we're going to have the review of Night of the Living Dead. This is the remake of Night of the Living Dead, released back in 1990. Everybody knows about it. Directed by fucking Tom Savini, starring Tony Todd and Patty Tolman and fucking Tom Tolles. This movie was actually made because of the original Night of the Living Dead with George and Mary. There was a lot of fucking hoopla and shit. Basically, the copyright got out of hand. Everybody was bootlegging it. They couldn't make no money. So the idea was, let's do a remake. Romero and Russo and all the original guys was going to get paid from the remake. I have to say, this is actually a pretty good remake, you know, especially compared to, you know, the bullshit remakes of the day that fucking just copy and paste. Savini really kind of did his own thing with this. He kind of changed a lot of the characters. You know, Ben's still a, still the strong fucking leader type, but uh, Barbara, she starts out like she does in the original, kind of wimpy, getting attacked and shit, but then she really fucking nuts up or shuts up, becomes a real hero of the fucking movie. Then you have the usual cast of characters. You got the wife. And the husband with the daughter downstairs sick in the basement. You got fucking Hick Tom and his fucking girlfriend hiding out. Judy Rose Murray fucking whatever the fuck her name is. Basically the movie takes place on the first day of the dead rising back to life. And this ain't like some fucking revisionist bullshit of like some virus for people running around everything spreading out. This is the good old days of where anybody who recently died come back to fucking life. That's the only way you can be reanimated in the fucking Romero universe or the Romero remake spinoff universe, whatever the fuck world this takes place in. And of course, the only way you can kill them is shoot them in the head or fucking bludgeon them or fuck, I don't know, kick them down the steps, make sure they hit their head a few good times. It's kind of hard to go into it because it's basically just a bunch of people like boarding up in a fucking house, fucking trying to get the windows all shut up and shit so the zombies don't come on. But the funny thing is, just like the original, all this banging and screaming and shit is actually making more zombies come out of the woodwork, more zombies. So it's kind of like they're sealing their own fate. I really like this remake a lot. I watch it just as much, if maybe not even more than the original I Live and Dead. I think it really has its place, you know, in the Romero universe, considered it is like kind of official little spin-off. The real fucking terrible shot-for-shot -shot remakes, they're boring, man. Either you like the remake and then you forget the original, or you like the original and you never watch the remake. I like this one because you can watch both, man, because slightly different shit happens. You know, they kind of have the same setting and stuff, but there's a different approach, a different pace to the movies. As far as I'm concerned, the world is big enough for both versions of I Live and Dead. Being a good remake that you can get into, doesn't shit all over the original, has some good fucking parts in it, you know, differentiates itself a little bit from the original and shit. I like Night of Living Dead. I put it really on the top of the remake list along with like the remake of the thing that John Carpenter did and shit. So hey, Night of Living Dead as a movie, I gotta give it 8 out of 10. It's just a really good fucking zombie, I don't know what, zombie-tacular, I guess. Now let's get into the controversy that has everybody all fucking just pissed off ready to fucking kill. Picture and sound, here we go. This Blu-ray come out from a small label called Twilight Time. What they do is it's just basically a couple guys running shit by themselves. They don't have a lot of money, so they license the movies from the studio. They do 3,000 units on each release, no matter what it is. Uh, they've had a few releases sell out. They had about 20 releases that just don't sell at all. So they kind of, you know, it's kind of like a balance sheet thing. They'll do a popular movie like Fright Night or fucking Night of Living Dead to help pay for all these old movies that they want to do from the 50s and 60s nobody buys. So with that being their business model, they actually take whatever transfer the studio gives them. So in this case, a couple years ago, Sony did a new transfer. They gave it to Twilight Time. Twilight Time thinks, oh, fucking great, man. We got a, like a new master. Our, our, our version of the Blu-ray is going to look real good and shit. Well, it come out, everybody got fucking angry. See, what happened was, when Sony did that new remaster a couple years ago, they totally redid it. The fucking, if you watch the DVD, you watch like the first ten minutes of it during the fucking credits and shit, it's all fucking grainy, there's huge scratches, like when they're driving through the cemetery, there's literally a fucking scratch goes all the way almost across the screen and shit. The DVD was a little rough to say the least, or at least that old master, so... Sony went big back in, they cleaned all that shit up, they got rid of all the print damage, you know, they fucking did a new high dev, I don't know if they did 4K scan, 2K scan, what, but they went, basically went back and redid the thing, and while they went back and redid it, they also redid the color timing. What's color timing? Well, when you shoot something, particularly on film, but you can do it with video too, then you put it in a computer and then you can play with the colors, you can say, oh, this looks a little too bright, let me darken it down. Oh, this looks a little too orange, let me fucking turn it another color. Whatever you want to do. Turn shit blue to look more like night, more like... Well, that's basically what they did. 
I don't know the real facts on it, but supposedly the DP of the movie, he was there to either supervise it or he just looked at it later and signed off on it. But basically what they did was, the beginning of the movie starts out the exact same like daylight quality as you've always seen and shit. But once Barbara gets attacked by the zombie, it starts darkening down a little bit. Basically, what it does is it looks like um, it looks like it's like almost nighttime, like dusk. They darken it down a little bit. When they start going closer into nighttime, the image starts getting a little bluish tint. There's some screenshots out there, like they look really dramatic and shit. And I gotta tell you, it does look dramatically different from any version that you've seen before and all that. But when you look at it on your TV, for whatever reason, it's not nearly as dramatic as in screenshots. But you can definitely tell something fake's been done. Now they redid the transfer on the whole movie. It does I wouldn't go as far as to say it's just all bathed in some blue filter the way some people have categorized it. But you can definitely tell it has a different look. They did saturate the colors. They went more towards, if you ever look at your TV, you can put the uh, color temperature on either cool or warm. You go warm, it looks oranges. You go cool, it looks bluish. Well, that's what they did. They kind of went to blue. They kind of sucked out the colors a little bit, made it a little more like a blue. It kind of looks a little closer to like a black and white film, but it's but it's in color. It, you know, it's just not as vibrant as shit. So a lot of people pissed off about that. I mean, what can I say? But print damage is gone. I didn't see a scratch on this the whole time, and I watched it twice. Actually, I watched it three times. The clarity is way fucking better. Sony has a bad habit of edge enhancement bullshit on their DVDs. When I was watching the DVD version to compare, like, there were so many times somebody would be talking around their ear, I see that little halo, like, that little line around fucking edges and shit. I, I Like, that's such a fucking 1997 fucking DVD fuck up. You know, I didn't wait 10 years for this to be out on DVD to go buy it for $5 in a Walmart bin. I bought this, like, the fucking second it was released. I've been watching this DVD for eight years. That shit always bothered me. There's real fucking compression flaws in this. There's real print damage in this. So I really appreciate that this new transfer fucking was really clean, really clear. You could really see into it. You could see a lot more little detail in it. But... Getting back to the blue shit. I mean, I don't know what to say. It looks different. It looks radically different. But, I mean, it looks more blue. But everything else looks better. So it's a really big trade-off right here. It's like, are you going to take the bluish palette, color palette and all the upgrades visually? Or are you going to say, fuck it, I'm going to watch a DVD? People say, oh, I download the HDX Voodoo and all that shit. Well, HDX Voodoo, I've not seen all of it, but I've seen parts of it. Especially the first few minutes. It has all the same print damage as a DVD. I'm sure the rest of it probably looks better, but I don't know, man. Like To me, there's no real clear-cut, picture-wise quality best version out there. Everybody says this is the correct color time. It's correct. It's so correct. I don't think this shit's fucking correct. How can I back this up? Well, just fucking watch it. The daylight scenes are all bright. That's cool. I ain't got no problem with that. I'm cool with the, the, the bright daylight scenes. I ain't got no problem with that. But when they get inside, man, color tones are funky. I understand this was a challenge on this movie. You got Patty Tallman. Is a red haired lady with a bunch of red freckles and shit. You got Tony Todd, a dark skinned man. And then you got Tom Tolles, who, I don't know, man, like, even in the DVD that everybody says correct, Tom Tolles looks like a waxy dummy <laughs> shit. Like, he just, he's, makeup, he's all sweaty and he's got makeup on, I don't know. But his skin tones never look really fucking good on the home video releases of this. So, to say this is correct, I saw a big room improve. Even if you watch the, look at the lighting inside. It's like, if you look at the background, the lamps they're supposed to have in there, they're very small lamps for the most part. You know, it's just like a little country farmhouse, but somehow everything's lit up all bright and it's really orangish looking. Like, I would say the color palette on this is too warm, and I would say the color palette on this is too cool. So, if it was me, man, I wish they could have done a master that really would have met these color timings, you know, in between. But hey, this is the real world. Shit didn't work out perfectly. With all the other visual upgrades, I will fucking take this. This was a good DVD. I watched it for a good eight years, but I'm ready to let this fucker go. It's not perfect visually and all that, but until a new master comes out that looks better, I will watch this version. The audio is fucking awesome on this. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This cannot, you know, when you look at screen grabs and shit and you're getting all angry on your internet fucking chat line bullshit, <laughs> you, can, you're not, you can't judge the audio, audio quality. DTS HD 5.1 master. It sounds so fucking good. It sounds so clear. The DVD was just fucking stereo. The beginning of the movie when they're driving through the graveyard, man, you can hear what they're saying in the car so much better now. You can you can hear every word, you can hear the inflection and the actors' voice is so much fucking better. The score, this movie kind of gets bagged on for having a funky score, 
But if you listen to it, like, really in surround sound, it's pretty fucking cool. It's very atmospheric. It's very low-end bass-heavy, this version on here. The man be hitting you with some bass, fucking getting you caught up in the movie. And the surrounds, a lot of times they do a remix of an old stereo movie, whatever. The surrounds aren't that used. They really use the surrounds to put the score in it. The score really, I think, enhances the movie. And it's, it just sounds fucking good, man. It just sounds like something that was made, like, last year. It doesn't sound like anything that was recorded 20 years ago. And in my mind, it really enhances the fucking, you know, experience of watching the movie. That being said, picture and sound, controversial, whatever. If it wasn't for the blue issue... You know, the, the picture being really clear, cleaned up of all the print damage, and the audio just being fucking booming and awesome and just loving it. For a good fucking catalog, I would really give this an 8.0 score. But the color shit, the blue shit, it doesn't kill the movie for me, but it looks a little fucking fake. And, it, and it's still, you know, the skin tones kind of are fucked up. So, I would normally give this 8.0, but because of the blue shit, you know, sorry, I gotta knock it down a whole point. Picture and sound, I want to give this controversial release 7 out of 10. Alright, back to more controversy. Extras, extra. Fucking Twilight Time, they don't have the budget or whatever to do their own extras. So, you know, they don't do these two discs like Shout Factory, whatever, special editions, whatever. They pretty much give whatever the studio gets them, gives them to put on there and shit. Sorry, man, but I'm just tired of everybody saying, Twilight Time is terrible. They do bare bones discs for $30. This night, let me do this bare bones. Bare bones. Bare Okay, first of all, it's not bare bones. You know what bare bones is? This is fucking bare bones. Special features include chapter search. Fuck that. That's fucking bare bones. This comes with the original theatrical trailer. Comes with the audio commentary from Tom Savini. It's the same one from the DVD that is ported over, but hey, at least it's there. It also comes with, and this is my favorite extra of this bare bones fucking set, isolated score track. Oh, bullshit. Fuck that. Score, score, score. I don't like the score. I don't want to listen to the score track. That's a gimmick. Listen, man. I threw this on expecting to watch it with the score only for like five minutes. A hand me hook, man. It's really fucking cool. Maybe it's because I've seen the movie so much so I know dialogue what's going on. I can kind of sit back. But just hearing the music and only having the music playing, man, it, I got to tell you, it, it made the movie scarier because when they're screaming and the zombies are roaring and shit, there's a lot of little pieces of music in there you don't get. Like when Ben's driving the truck, if you just listen to the score, there's actually a hit in there that makes that fucking hit when he runs the zombie over seem so much harder and shit. The score, it, 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 I don't know, man. It's scary. It's fucking scary. It's, it's like watching a silent movie. And I actually find the isolated score version scarier than the regular version with the voices and shit. So I gotta say, that really surprised the hell of me. I love the isolated score track. Also, Twilight Time, because they do the shit. They always do a little booklet, which is nice, man. You don't, get, you don't get booklets and shit anymore. It's got some shit. It's got an essay. It's got some real nice pictures in here. So, hey, that's a nice little touch, man. Listen, I wouldn't go as far is to say this is a special edition but they came with the brand new isolated score you know there's there was like a little bullshit featurette making that was on the DVD that they didn't get to put on here but I mean whatever it, at least they give you something so special features I'm gonna go ahead because I think it's more about quality than quantity I'm gonna go ahead and give it 6 out of 10 so that's it for the Twilight Time Live Edition sold out controversial release Night Living Dead hey man it might not have been the perfect version that we always wanted you know, I'm hoping that when, like, 4K Blu-ray comes out, we'll get a fucking version that, you know, looks a little more natural. They finally can get these skin tones right, because, sorry, that DVD didn't look good. Fucking, I don't know, compression artifacts. Fucking Tony Todd looked orange in half the indoor scenes. This one, yeah, it's a little cool. Tony Todd looks a little purplish in the face, whatever. Hey, but I'll take it for right now, man. I'm just glad to have a new version of this. Even if it's not the perfect version, I appreciate Twilight Time. I'm glad they're out there. And I'm not here to fucking defend them. If you don't like them, don't buy their shit. I really don't give a fuck. I don't have anything to do with it. But hey, Night of Living Dead. Controversy, controversy. What are you going to do? But hey, if you're a fan of the movie like me, and you've been watching this thing for years and years and years, I think you got to have this. So hopefully you pre-ordered it and you got your copy and you're enjoying it. If you're one of the people who got it disappointed, just send it back to Twilight Time to get a refund, man.